Hello, and thank you for joining me for this Medicare workshop video. My name is John Derbis. I'm a licensed agent and Medicare expert here at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota in Duluth. In this video, you'll learn how and when to enroll in Original Medicare, what Medicare does and does not cover, and most importantly, how to pick a plan that best fits your health and lifestyle needs. The video lasts about one hour long, and by the end of it, you'll have a great foundational knowledge of Medicare. After the video, most people choose to work with a trusted person to help guide them through the Medicare process, and that's great. That's what my colleagues and I at the Blue Cross Center in Duluth do every day. Uh, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consultations to answer all your questions and recommend a plan that best fits your lifestyle. When you're ready to enroll, we simply complete your enrollment form and we continue to be an ongoing resource for you into the future. If you ever have any questions, you simply need to reach out. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, well, let's start by looking at the topics that we're going to be covering here today. And this is really going to be split into two different parts. So we're going to start in the first part by covering Medicare basics. And here we're going to be talking about Part A, that covers you when you're in the hospital, and Part B is in Bravo. That's going to cover everything you do outside the hospital. Now, Part A and Part B together are commonly referred to as Original Medicare. And I want you to think of that as the base coverage. That's what everyone starts out with. And then in the second part of the presentation, we're going to go on and talk about the plans Blue Cross Blue Shield offers that supplement, that give you more coverage than what you're getting from that base, Part A and Part B. And we'll also talk about why you might want to add more supplemental coverage. And then we'll go ahead and identify some key criteria for you to take into consideration when choosing which one of the supplemental plans is going to be most suitable for your particular needs. Well, let's start with the timing. So this is going to be when you're eligible for Medicare and when your coverage will actually take effect. Now, the most common way to qualify for Medicare is simply turning age 65. So those of you listening today that will be new to Medicare because you will be 65, the initial enrollment period is going to be important. Now, this period is going to include the month you turn 65, the three months before, and the three months after. So it is a seven-month window. Now, if you're collecting Social Security benefits for at least four months prior to turning age 65, then you will automatically be enrolled in both Part A and Part B Medicare. You'll get this red, white, and blue Medicare card in the mail around three to four months before you turn 65. Now, if you're not collecting those Social Security benefits, that's okay. You're still eligible for Medicare when you turn 65, but in that case, you are going to need to initiate turning those Part A and Part B benefits on. And you're going to do that by contacting the Social Security office. You're either going to call them or you can enroll on their website. And I'll have both the phone number and the web address on the next slide. Now, when you are eligible to contact Social Security, well, again, that's going to be during that seven-month initial enrollment period window. And as long as you're reaching out to Social Security during those first three months before you turn 65, then the effective date for both your Part A and Part B Medicare coverage will be the first of the month in which you turn 65. Now, if you wait to contact Social Security during your birth month or those three months that follow, that's okay. You're still in that initial enrollment period window. However, now the effective date for your coverage is going to get pushed out a little bit further. The next enrollment period we have is the special enrollment period. And there's a number of different events that may occur in your life that will open up a window of opportunity for you to either sign up for Medicare for the first time or in some cases make changes to that extra supplemental coverage that you've added on top of your Medicare benefits. Now, we won't have time here today to go into detail on all the different special enrollment events, but I will talk a little further about the most common special enrollment event that I see. And that would be people who turn age 65. So they are eligible for Medicare. However, they're working and they have a plan that their employer is offering and they want to stay on that plan. Well, you can do that 
as long as the employer coverage is what's called creditable. Now, creditable coverage just means as good or better than Medicare's coverage. And to find out if your employer is indeed offering creditable coverage, you can talk to someone in your HR department or whoever handles benefit administration at your company. Now, again, as long as it's creditable, you can stay working and stay on that employer coverage as long as you want. When you do finally decide to retire, that is going to create the special enrollment event. Now you can contact Social Security, let them know you're coming off of a creditable employer plan, and you're ready to start Medicare. Well, two other enrollment periods to go through on this slide. First to the bottom left, we have what's called the annual election period. And this is always going to occur every year between October 15th and December 7th. And this is the time when all Medicare beneficiaries are going to be reviewing their needs. And if they want to choose a different supplemental plan, they can do so during this period. Now, any plan you elect between October 15th and December 7th will then take effect January 1st of the following year. And then finally, over to the right, we have what's called the open enrollment period. Now, first of all, this period will only apply to those Medicare beneficiaries who have elected what's called an Advantage plan. Now, an Advantage plan is just a type of plan insurance companies offer that gives you more coverage than what you're getting from that original Part A and Part B Medicare. And we'll talk in more detail about Advantage plans in a little bit. But for now, just know if you did elect an Advantage plan, and then during the first three months of the year, you decide that plan isn't suiting your needs, or maybe your needs have changed, well, you actually get an opportunity to drop that plan and pick up something else. So think about this as a trial period if you choose an Advantage plan. All right, well, as promised on the next slide, I do have the phone number for Social Security and their website over to the right. And I've also included some helpful resources here with the Medicare helpline and the senior linkage line. Well, let's now look at the benefits that Medicare is offering. And these are, again, your original Medicare benefits. And we'll start over to the left with Part A. Now, Part A Medicare is primarily going to be covering you while you're in the hospital. Most Medicare beneficiaries do not have a monthly premium cost for Part A. They get it at what's called premium free. However, if you do start utilizing this benefit, there will be some costs. Now, let's take a look at that. Medicare is going to break this Part A inpatient hospital benefit into three different periods. The first period is going to cover the first 60 days that you're in the hospital. For those 60 days, you're going to have a $1,484 deductible. So you're going to be responsible for paying the first $1,400. After you meet that deductible, then Medicare is going to step in and they're going to pay 100% of all covered benefit costs for that 60-day window. Now, if you have a little more extended stay in the hospital, the next period gives you 30 more days of coverage. Those would be days 61 through 90. Now, for those days, you have a $371 daily copay. And the next period is going to give you 60 more days of coverage, days 91 through 150. And now that daily copay doubles from what it was during the last period. So you would be responsible for paying $742 every day. Now, you'll notice in parentheses under those last period days, days 91 through 150, it says lifetime reserve days. And that means just like what it sounds like. You only get to use those days one time in your life. Once you use them, they are gone. So I want you to think of your Part A benefit is 90 days of inpatient hospital coverage per benefit period. All right, And a benefit period is going to start the day you go into the hospital, and it's going to end 60 consecutive days after you're out of the hospital. So let's look at a couple examples to help illustrate this. Let's say you go into the hospital for two nights. And then you go home, and 30 days, let's say, after you're home, you need to go right back in the hospital. And it could be completely unrelated to why you were there the first time. Well, in that case, you haven't been out of the hospital those 60 consecutive days, so when you go back in the second time, you're actually in the same benefit period, which means now you're going to be on day three. So those days keep accumulating. 
Now let's look at another example. We'll start the same way, the same two night stay in the hospital, only this time after you go home, it's not until 61 days that you've been home that you need to go back to the hospital. Well, that is gonna generate a whole new benefit period. So in this example, when you go back in the second time, you're back to day one. You're also gonna go back to having to meet that $1,484 deductible again. So you might have to meet that deductible multiple times in the same year, depending on how frequently you're in and out of the hospital. All right, well, let's go over to the right and talk about Part B Medicare. Now, Part B is gonna cover everything you do outside of the hospital. So quite a few things covered by Part B. For example, office visits, whether to a primary care physician or to a specialist. This could be trips to the emergency room or urgent care. It could be an ambulance ride, durable medical equipment like canes, walkers, CPAP machines. This could be diagnostic tests such as x-rays, MRIs, CT scans. So again, a lot of different things covered under the Part B benefit. Now here, unlike Part A, where most people get it premium free, Part B, there is going to be a monthly cost. And it starts this year at $148.50 a month. Now it can go up to just over $504 a month. So pretty big range there of what you might be paying for that Part B be benefit. Now Medicare is ultimately going to determine what you pay for your Part B based on your income. And quite simply, the more money you make, the more you're going to pay for Part B. Now they have set income threshold levels. So if you are single and your income exceeds $88,000, you're going to pay more than that $148.50. Married couples filing taxes jointly with an income that exceeds $176,000 are also going to have to pay more than that $148.50 and just how much more depends on how high your income goes above those threshold numbers I just gave you. Now there's also a deductible for your Part B services. This is relatively low, it's $203. So you're gonna pay the first $203 for any covered Part B benefit cost. After you do, it becomes an 80-20 plan. That means Medicare is gonna pay 80% of the cost and you're gonna be left paying the remaining 20%. So that is how your original Medicare benefits are going to work. Now just as important as it is to understand what Medicare does cover, it's really important you understand what Medicare does not cover. So we'll start with the first bullet point, inpatient hospital days beyond Medicare's limits. Well, we know now that you get 90 days of inpatient hospital coverage per benefit period. And then you also get those 60 lifetime reserve days to use if you need them. But if you exceed that, there is no coverage with original Medicare. Routine physicals. So Medicare is going to give you 12 months from whenever your Part B is in Bravo Medicare starts to go get a Welcome to Medicare exam. And this one is a pretty thorough annual exam. However, they only give you that thorough exam one time. So every year after the first year you're on Medicare, you get what's called a wellness visit or a wellness check. And this one is pretty limited in scope. It's not gonna cover much more than your height, your weight, and your blood pressure. Now Medicare will step in and cover some bigger ticket kind of testing items like mammograms, colonoscopies, bone density tests, a lot of cancer screenings, but that actual office visit to go in and see your doctor is gonna be limited to the wellness visit. Some other preventive services Medicare will not cover, a routine hearing exam, a vision exam, and most of your dental care. Medicare is also set up to cover you in the U.S. only. So for the most part, if you travel outside the U.S. and just have original Medicare, you will have no coverage. And finally, we talk about prescription drugs not covered by Part A or Part B Medicare. Well, let's start by talking about what is covered medication-wise by Part A and Part B. When you are in the hospital, any medication administered to you is going to be covered by Part A. Part B is in Bravo medications. Medicare is going to decide what a Part B drug is. Now, most of those medications covered under Part B, those are going to be infused drugs. So you have to go into a clinic or a hospital in some cases to have them administered to you. Most common example of a Part B is in Bravo drug is going to be chemo. 
Now, the last thing I want to mention here about original Medicare is going to be up at the top in that green box, just to the right of the dollar sign. And that's where it says original Medicare does not have an annual out-of-pocket max. And that means if you exceed the number of inpatient hospital days Medicare covers, you're on your own and there is no limit to what you're going to be paying. With the services you're getting outside the hospital, covered under Part B, we know now that you're paying roughly 20% of the cost for those services. But the big question here would be 20% of what cost? Now, visits to a primary care physician might not be too expensive, but you start seeing some specialists. Maybe you take an ambulance ride, emergency care, some of your diagnostic tests like MRIs, CT scans, even your lab work. That kind of stuff can get very expensive, paying 20% of which that can still be a very high number. And this is without a doubt the number one reason why people will come to me to get supplemental coverage so that they can get that out of max in place, so that they can kind of have that worst case scenario. Now all the plans we're gonna look at next that Blue Cross offers are gonna do just that. They're gonna give you that out of pocket max. Well, before we get into the specifics of the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans, I just wanna show you the different types of supplemental plans that are available. The first two listed, the cost plans and the advantage plans, these are going to be regional. That means the county you live in is going to determine which one of these plans you're actually eligible to enroll in. The next two, the Medicare supplement, or what are often called Medigap plans, and finally the prescription drug plans, those plans are going to be available statewide. And as we progress through the presentation, I'll go into far more detail about how each of these plans works. A little bit of background about Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have been in Minnesota for over 85 years. That does make us the longest running health insurance company in Minnesota. We've been serving Minnesotans for over four generations and currently have well over 300,000 Medicare members. Now that number represents over half of all eligible Medicare beneficiaries in the state. We're very proud year to year to have highly rated Medicare plans and we are very committed to giving back to our local communities and charitable organizations. All right, well, we're going to start by talking about our Advantage plans. Now, Advantage plans are also commonly referred to as replacement plans. And the reason for that is when you have an Advantage plan, the insurance company is replacing Medicare. That means all administration of your benefits and all claims are handled at the insurance company level. So Medicare is basically out of the picture. Now, you still have to pay Medicare your Part B premium, but again, all administration of benefits and all claims are handled directly by the insurance company. Advantage plans are also going to combine both medical and Part D drug coverage into one plan. And a lot of people really like the simplicity and the convenience that offers. You have one card, one bill, it is a one package solution. And as we'll see, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Advantage plans are also going to include a lot of nice extras like dental, vision, and hearing. Now these Advantage plans are one of those plans I referred to earlier as regional, which simply means the county you live in is going to determine which Advantage plan you are eligible to enroll in. And in Minnesota, we have three different regions. We have the South region, the metro region, and the plans we'll be discussing today, the west region. So if you look first over to the right on this slide, you'll notice two maps of Minnesota. The top map is going to highlight the counties that make up the west region. So you do indeed need to reside in one of those highlighted counties in order to be eligible to enroll in the west region Advantage plans. However, if you look just below, that map of Minnesota is going to highlight your network, which is going to be statewide and comprised of 96% of all providers in the state. So you have a huge statewide network. Examples of some providers that will be included in the network, Fairview, University of Minnesota, Centricare, Alina, the Abbott Hospital, Health Partners, Park Nicollet, Mayo Clinic, just to name a few. Now, we do have low monthly premiums on our West Region Advantage plans. In fact, one of the plans is at no cost. There are three different West Region Advantage plans, and all of them, as I mentioned, are going to have both medical and drug coverage. 
combined into one plan, as well as a lot of those nice extras like the dental, vision, and hearing. You do have that large access network, but if you do travel outside of Minnesota within the U.S., we will extend coverage to all 50 states. If you do leave the U.S., we will extend our emergency benefit. And finally, these are annual contracts, so year to year, the benefits can change. Well, speaking of changes, we have made some really nice enhancements to our West Region Advantage plans, moving from last year, 2020, to this year, 2021. First of all, the monthly premium cost on both our choice and complete plans was reduced. We took that down by about $4 a month this year on our choice, and we reduced the complete premium by almost $10 a month. We also reduced the out-of-pocket exposure on both the choice and complete plans, we reduced that by $800 on the choice and $500 on the complete. Primary care physician visits will be at no cost to our West Region Advantage plan members this year. We're also going to increase the amount of money we give to our members for over-the-counter items. These would be things like vitamins and supplements. We have some new benefits for this year, including meals after inpatient hospital stays, acupuncture, and on our complete West Region Advantage plan, our covered insulins will be at no cost. Well, not really changes to the plans, but definitely some key features. First of all, again, that large statewide network, including 96% of all the providers in Minnesota. We've got about 60,000 pharmacies in network across the U.S., and this is going to be really important. There are no referrals needed. So if you want to go see a specialist or get a second opinion, you can just pick up the phone and make that appointment. No need for a referral. If you do travel outside of Minnesota but within the U.S., again, we extend coverage to all 50 states, and you get nine months to take advantage of that travel benefit. If you do travel outside the U.S., your emergency coverage will go with you. Now, that's a great benefit to take with you outside the U.S., but I do recommend to all my Advantage Plan members, if they are going to be traveling outside the U.S., to consider looking at travel insurance. And at Blue Cross, we have a great product called Geo Blue. Now, we won't have time to go into detail about how that travel insurance works today. Just know we have it, and if you're interested, you can contact us. We'll be happy to get you more information. All right, well, here we have the three West Region Advantage plans. The core plan, that's that $0 plan. The choice plan, $84.20. And finally, the complete, $183.10. No deductible for any medical services on any three of these plans. The next line item, the annual out-of-pocket max. This is going to be really important. Remember, this is something that your original Medicare benefits do not offer. So here's how this is going to work. On that core plan, that $0 plan, the most you could spend in a calendar year on your covered benefit costs would be $5,900. If you get to $5,900, you're done. Now Blue Cross is going to come in and pay 100% of all your covered benefit costs. On the choice plan, that out-of-pocket exposure goes down to $3,100. And on the complete, that'll take you down to $2,700. Now you'll notice the numbers right below those are a little higher. And those out-of-pocket maxes are going to apply if you get services outside of our network. Now, that would be hard to do in Minnesota. You need to find one of those 4% of doctors that do not participate. But if you did, you still do have a benefit. It's just not quite as good as when you're in the network. And then the last line item will show you what you'll be paying for specific services if you do go out of network. Again, you've got a benefit there just not quite as good as when you're in the network. So out of network, you would be paying either 40 or 45% of the cost for covered benefits. Now, if you're in the network, what are you going to be paying? Well, let's look at that on the next slide. And you'll notice in the column to the far left, we're going to list specific benefits. And then you're going to simply slide over to the right under each of the three plan types to see what you would be paying to use those benefits. Primary care visits, again, no cost on any three of the plans. If you are going to go see a specialist, like say an orthopedic doctor or maybe a dermatologist, on the core plan you would have a $50 copay, on the choice $30, and finally on the complete that would be $20. Your lab services are going to be covered in full, no cost to you. Any diagnostic testing like x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, radiology services, on the core and the choice you'd pay a percentage of the cost for that, 
whereas on the complete, there would be no cost. Ambulatory surgical centers, these are going to be places where you go typically for same-day surgeries. Examples would be like carpal tunnel or cataract surgery. Now, ambulatory surgical centers are not connected to the hospital. They might be part of a clinic or their own freestanding building, but again, they're not part of the hospital. And you can see there's co-pays associated with the services you get at an ambulatory surgical center. Now, if you're in the hospital getting same-day surgery, you would typically be categorized as an outpatient. And you can see the co-pays are a little bit higher for same-day surgeries in the hospital as opposed to those surgical centers. Now, if you are in the hospital as an inpatient, then on that core plan, you would have a $400 copay per day for the first four days. Once you get to day five, no further cost to you. On the choice and complete plans, you have a copay, but that one copay will cover the entire admittance. Whether you're there one day, four days, or 100 days, you just have that one copay. Emergency and urgent care, you can see there are copays associated with those benefits. And finally, Part B is in Bravo medications. On all three of the Advantage plan options, you would be responsible for 20% of the cost. And that would be up to that out-of-pocket max we looked at on the last slide. All right, well, let's next look at the drug plan benefits. And the first thing to keep in mind about drug coverage is that there's a formulary. Now, a formulary is just a list of all the drugs that we cover. All the drugs that we cover are going to be categorized by tier levels. And you'll notice those in the column to the far left. There's five different tier levels. The first couple tier levels are primarily going to be made up of generic medications. Then tiers three and four are going to be primarily your brand name drugs. And finally, tier five, those are going to be your specialty drugs. Now, on the core plan, your Tier 1 medications have no deductible, and as you can see, there's no cost for those drugs. However, if it is a Tier 2 through 5 medication, you will have a deductible to meet of $445. After you meet that deductible, then you get into the cost sharing listed on the chart, and those numbers, whether it's a set dollar amount or a percent, those are going to be what you would pay for a month's supply of your medication. On the choice plan, there's no deductible for Tier 1 and Tier 2 medications. If it is a Tier 3 through 5, you'll meet the $300 deductible first. And over on the complete plan, there's no deductible for any tier level of medication. I should also point out that on the choice and complete plans, you've got the preferred pharmacy and standard pharmacy columns. Those are referring to pharmacy type. So all of the 60,000 pharmacies that we cover across the U.S. are either going to be preferred or standard. Examples of preferred pharmacies are going to be CVS, Target, Cub, Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, Thrifty White, just to name a few. The big standard pharmacy is going to be Walgreens. Now, Walgreens and any other standard pharmacies are covered, but you can see you're going to pay a little bit more to standard pharmacy for the same medication as opposed to if you get it filled at a preferred pharmacy. All right, well, although all drug plans are offered through insurance companies, Medicare governs how those plans work. So they set forth rules that all drug plans in the country need to follow, and one of those rules is called the coverage gap, or what you'll commonly hear referred to as the donut hole. So these numbers that I'm about to go through with you, again, do apply to all drug plans offered in the country. So how this works is once what you have spent on your medication and what the insurance company has subsidized. When those two numbers together reach $4,130, you have reached the coverage gap. That means instead of paying according to the cost-sharing chart we looked at on the last slide, you're going to be paying 25% of the cost for all covered medications. And you'll continue to pay that 25% until what you and you alone have spent on your medication reaches $6,550. If you get to that point, you have reached what's called catastrophic coverage. Now you'll pay $3.70 for covered generics, $9.20 for covered brand name drugs, or 5% of the cost of your medication, whichever one of those numbers is higher. And you'll continue to pay according to that schedule until the end of the calendar year, at which point the slate is wiped clean and you start over. 
Now, if this is sounding a little confusing, believe me, you're not alone, but there is an easy way to kind of cut through all this and find out exactly how your specific medications will be covered and whether or not this coverage gap will affect you. And that's by running what's called a drug calculator. Now, you can do that on Blue Cross's website, or you can work with your agent. They can help you with that as well. All right, well, let's talk about some of those nice extras that are included with our Advantage plans. First of all, your annual physical is covered in full. And this is going to go above and beyond that kind of flimsy wellness check that Medicare offers. So every one of our Advantage plan members is going to get a full, thorough annual physical. We're also going to give our members $50 every quarter towards over-the-counter items. So these would be things, again, like vitamins and supplements. The Silver Sneakers program is a great benefit. It does come with all of our plan options. And how this works is whichever Blue Cross Blue Shield plan you decide to enroll in, the monthly premium you pay to have that plan is going to cover a gym membership in full as long as that gym participates with Silver Sneakers. Now, currently, there's over 16,000 participating Silver Sneakers gyms across the country. You can join any one of those gyms, and there is no limit to the number of gyms you can become a member of. So if you like going to the YMCA in the morning to use their lap pool, and then you want to go over to a Lifetime Fitness to play in a pickleball league, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. And no minimum number of days you need to go to the gym to keep the benefit. And I should also mention that Silver Sneakers has now put together some great home workout programs. Acupuncture, that's going to be a new benefit, and actually Medicare is going to cover acupuncture this year for the first time. Now, Medicare's coverage of acupuncture is going to give you 20 visits, but it has to be related to lower back pain. You're going to get to take advantage of that. But then as an Advantage plan member, you're going to get an additional 20 acupuncture visits for any kind of pain. Dental is going to be included on all of our Advantage plans. It is a preventive benefit, meaning you get two exams, two cleanings, a set of x-rays, and a periodontal cleaning covered every year. Vision, we're going to cover two vision exams for you every year, no cost to you, and we do offer reimbursements for glasses or contacts. Now, on the $0 core plan, we'll reimburse you up to $90 every year for glasses or contacts. On that mid-level choice plan, we'll reimburse you up to $125 every year. And finally, on the complete option, we'll reimburse you up to $150. We will also cover a hearing exam on all three Advantage plan options, no cost to you, with some nice discounts on hearing aids should you need those. And finally, a new benefit this year, we will provide our Advantage plan members meals after inpatient hospital stays, and we'll deliver those right to your home. The next plans we're going to be talking about today are the Medicare supplements, or what are commonly referred to as Medigap plans. Now, with these plans, Medicare is actually your primary insurance. That means all administration of benefits and all claims start at the Medicare level. Now, Medicare is going to pay on those claims based on the benefits we looked at a little earlier in the presentation. Then the claim is going to work its way to us at the insurance company, and we're going to fill the gaps. Now, these Medicare supplement plans can only be medical coverage. Some of the other plans we've looked at today, you can combine medical and drug into one plan. Not the case here. These are only medical plans. So if you want to have, say, a drug plan, you have to purchase a separate independent drug plan. These Medicare supplements or Medigap plans are also going to have some other unique features that set them apart. Let's take a look at that next. So first of all, the benefits on these Medigap plans are guaranteed to renew. That simply means as long as you pay your monthly premium, you're going to keep the same benefits year to year. The other plans we've talked about today have annual contracts, so those benefits can change. Not the case on these Medigaps. Guarantee issue. This is going to be a really important concept for you to understand. How this works is you get six months from whenever your Part B is in Bravo Medicare starts to enroll in a Medigap plan and have a guarantee issue. That means you fill out the application and you're into the plan. Now, if you enroll after that six-month period, then there will be health questions that go with the application, which means our underwriters are going to get involved. They're going to look at any pre-existing conditions, and they do have the right to deny you coverage. 
So I always like to tell folks, especially when they're new to Medicare, the best time to enroll in one of these Medicare supplement plans is when you're first eligible because that may be the only time that you're going to have that guarantee issue. Now, these plans are not regional. They are available to all Minnesota residents. And these plans are also completely portable, meaning wherever you go, the plan goes with you. Even if you move outside of Minnesota and have residency in another state permanently, these plans will still go with you. Again, these are medical coverage only, and that does give you the ability to then choose any standalone drug plan available to you in Minnesota. The network for these plans is going to be anyone that takes Medicare, and that's not just in Minnesota, but that's going to be across the whole country. So you have a very large nationwide network. If you do travel outside the country, your emergency coverage will go with you. These plans, like all the others we've talked about today, come with Silver Sneakers, that great gym membership. We also do offer local customer service, a 24-hour-a-day, 7-day-a-week nurse line. Blue 365 is a great program that offers discounts on health-related items. These might be things like glasses or hearing aids. And we do also offer wellness programs and health coaching to all of our Medicare supplement members. All right, well, here we have the three Medicare supplement or Medigap plan options, the high deductible plan, plan N, and basic Medicare blue. Now, you'll notice first with the premiums, there's two different premiums. The first one, tobacco-free, is if you're not a tobacco user. The second standard premium is going to apply to anyone who has used tobacco in the last 24 months, so a little bit higher premium if you are a tobacco user. The high deductible plan, $70.70 a month, that's the tobacco free rate, and then you do have a deductible that's set at $2,370. So on this plan, you would simply be responsible for the first $2,370 in any covered benefit cost. If you get to the point of meeting that deductible, now you're done. Now Blue Cross is going to step in and pay 100% of your covered benefit costs. Plan N, this one works like a copay plan. Now, your tobacco-free rate here monthly is $198.55. And before you get to the copays, you do have to satisfy Medicare's Part B deductible, which, remember, applies to any services you get outside the hospital. And that's $203. After you satisfy that deductible, there's three benefit areas where you would have copays, and I'll show those to you on the next slide. And then finally, we have what of these three plans amounts to the most popular the basic Medicare Blue, this one is $231.40 a month. And on this plan, just like that plan N, you will be responsible for satisfying that Part B deductible of $203. But on the basic Blue plan, after you meet that deductible, as long as it's a Medicare-eligible service, there will be no further cost to you. Well, on the next slide, we talk about specific benefit categories, but we've really explained how these plans work, and I want to go through that one more time. On the high deductible plan, you are simply responsible for the first $2,370 in any covered benefit cost. Once you get to that point and satisfy the deductible, there will be no further cost for Medicare-eligible services. Plan N, the copay plan, remember you do have to meet that $203 Part B deductible after you do Three areas where you'll have co-pays. Those would be for office visits at $20, emergency room visits, $50, and finally, urgent care, $20. And then finally, on basic Medicare Blue, again, you're responsible for meeting that $203 Part B deductible after you do. No further costs for Medicare-eligible services. Now, I do want to talk in more detail about the second line item from the top where it talks about preventive benefits. And you'll notice... Under the high deductible and plan in, it says not covered. Well, keep in mind with these Medigap, these Medicare supplement plans, Medicare is your primary insurance. So if it's a service Medicare does not cover, for the most part, then these plans will not cover it either. Now, at the beginning of the presentation, we talked about some preventive services Medicare does not cover. For example, an eye exam or a hearing screening. So because Medicare doesn't cover those, the high deductible plan and the plan N does not as well. Now, the basic Medicare blue plan is actually going to give you $120 every year towards those preventive services 
Medicare does not cover. So now you've got that $120 to use, for example, towards an eye exam or a hearing screening. All right, well, that's everything on the supplements. Those are pretty straightforward plans. We will move next into the Medicare Blue RX standalone drug plans. Now, remember, a lot of the plans we talked about today come with drug coverage. But if you have that Medigap plan option we just talked about, there is no drug coverage, so you'd want to look at one of our two standalone drug plan options. And those would be the standard plan at $66.40 a month or the premier plan at $104.70 a month. Now, on the standard plan, there will be no deductible for Tier 1 or Tier 2 medications. If you do have a Tier 3 through 5 medication, you will be responsible for the first $445. And over on the Premier plan, we got rid of that deductible altogether. Remember, we do have a formulary for each plan, and they're all different. And on the formulary, all the drugs that we cover on these plans will be classified by those five tier levels, the first two being primarily generic drugs, tiers three and four being primarily brand name drugs, and tier five specialty. Same preferred and standard pharmacies is what I talked about earlier. So again, examples there of preferred pharmacies. You've got your CVSs, Targets, Walmart, Cub, Costco, Sam's Club, just to name a few of those. And the big standard pharmacy on these plans would be Walgreens. Again, Walgreens or any other standard pharmacy is covered, but you pay a little bit more for the same medication at one of those standard pharmacies as opposed to going to a preferred pharmacy. Well, that coverage gap or donut hole that I discussed earlier with those other plans, that still does apply as it does to all drug plans in the country. I won't go through those de details specifically, but I will point out that our premier plan, that one that's just over $104 a month, has a slight exception to how the coverage works when in the coverage gap. So on that premier plan, if you do indeed get into the coverage gap, any of your tier one and tier two medications filled at a preferred pharmacy will be at no cost to you, as opposed to having to pay 25% of the cost like you would on any of the other plans that we looked at today. Now, whether or not that premier plan is gonna be suitable for your needs, well, we can run that drug calculator that I mentioned, and that'll help us determine which plan is gonna make most sense for you. The Part D late enrollment penalty. So if you do not enroll in a Part D drug plan when you are first eligible, and then later down the road decide to pick one up, Medicare is gonna penalize you. Now the penalty is gonna be 1% of the national average cost of a prescription drug plan. That's around $50 a month. So 1% of $50 is 50 cents, and then you're going to multiply that by the number of months you could have had a drug plan, but you didn't. Now, whatever that calculates out to be, you're going to be paying every month on top of the cost of whatever drug plan you enroll in. And you'll always be paying that penalty every month as long as you have a Part D drug plan. Now, if you never take a Part D drug plan, you'll never have to worry about the penalty. But I always like to advise people that is out there. A lot of folks new to Medicare especially, if they're not taking any medications or maybe very inexpensive medications, might wonder, why should I take a Part D drug plan? And this would be one answer to that, to avoid the penalty down the road. So just be aware it's out there. Well, medications can be very expensive, and I want you to know there is extra help to pay for the cost of medications. To find out if you qualify for any of this extra help, you can either contact Social Security or Medicare, and I have those phone numbers listed for you on this slide. Well, that basically brings us to the end of the content I wanted to cover with you today. I do have three more slides that Medicare requires I show to you. What to expect when you enroll, you're going to get a welcome letter, a welcome packet, and an ID card, and I can go into far more detail with you if you do decide to take a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. The next couple slides, again, just give you more important information. Remember, if you'd like a copy of these PowerPoint uh, slides, I'd be more than happy to send these out to you. Thank you for tuning into the Medicare Workshop video. I hope it was helpful and informative. When you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help. One last reminder, if you know anyone who is turning 65 or about to retire, you're welcome to share our contact information or invite them to attend a Medicare workshop 
like this one. Thanks again, and take care.